Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. In this video, I thought I would bring you along as I take my kids and I to Dollar Tree. We're going in for just some essentials, but we did see some cute things along the way. So I'm just sharing some of the Easter things that we saw in the store, as well as some of the things that were new to me at least. They had a lot of three or five dollar items, which I'm not used to seeing because of, you know, my certain Dollar Tree locations. So I just thought, you know, maybe some of you guys don't have the best Dollar Trees either. And maybe these things are going to be coming your way. But here I saw these cute little bunnies and we are actually going to be picking up one of those to make some crafts with. So stay tuned for that. That will be at the end of today's video. I thought these signs were really pretty but I, you know, didn't pick any of those up. And then here are some of the containers that they had that I was pretty impressed with. I don't know how they would compare to containers at Walmart, if it would be worth spending five or three dollars on some of these, or if it's just better to buy better quality ones elsewhere. Then we headed into the craft section to get some of the items that I definitely needed. These vases were really pretty. These $5 crafts looked really cute. This flamingo one caught the attention of Aubrey's eye. I was surprised to see this decoy security doorbell. I don't know how many of these would actually sell, but, you know, very interesting product. And then these looked really cute if you have makeup or are into makeup, but I'm not. So I would be thinking, like, how can I organize my crafting supplies with this? We normally get our freeze-dried fruit from Dollar Tree because in the past I've calculated it to be the best per ounce. Not sure if that's the case anymore, but we have our little go-to brands and I just absolutely love the apple ones, especially for church because they are a rather quiet snack. And then you guys saw some of the other new items. The quality of this rug uh, or like the door rug was pretty nice. I could see purchasing this for the future, even doing like a DIY, like painting on it, like your own design. So that was definitely an interesting find. And, you know, now I know that it's there. And some of these larger baskets also really caught my eye, possibly for organizing in our family room, some of the toys when our other basket is totally demolished by Jack's usage. And then a bunch of just other really cool and interesting items. They had a lot of like ex more expensive toys, but the kids definitely were interested in that. And I'm just noticing like they have a Catan dice game. I should have looked at that when we were in the store. I like playing Settlers of Catan. So if you know that game and you like it too, let me know down below in the comments. And then one of the reasons I went into Dollar Tree was for some floral moss and I wanted it to be more green. So I was really disappointed that the only one that they had was like this brown one. But you will see in at the end of this video, I make it work. They had beautiful flowers in the store for the, you know, selection. And then they had this cute like scent thing, bath dust which I thought would make for like a really cute gift for someone. So we were done shopping and we broke into one or two, I think it was two of those freeze dried fruit bags. And here is my little haul of what I actually got. So we got two dried peaches, two strawberry packs. We got, I think four of the dried apples, but we ate one in the car. And then we also got another bag, which was like mixed fruit. And the kids ate that one as well. I did pick up this flamingo thing because I I thought Aubrey would enjoy painting this while I got stuff done during Jack's nap and you'll get to see a little bit more of the details in a second. I picked up an ovulation kit because they didn't have any pregnancy tests. I don't think I'm pregnant but we would like to have another one so at least uh, an ovulation kit will do. It also, fun fact, works as a pregnancy test in a pinch. Got some deodorant. Uh, it's actually a pretty good deal, this, uh, this amount of deodorant for $1.25. And then I got some of the crafting essentials, which you guys will see me make in just a second. And like I said, I was disappointed this moss was more brown than green, but I did end up having a little bit of green left over, so we will make it work. And then I picked up some items for our new chicken coop, which you guys will get to see in one of my upcoming videos. Got some paint brushes because we still have some touching up of paint to do. Got a kitty litter scoop because I'm trying a new technique in cleaning the coop. And then some fabric as well for 
creating a little privacy wall for their nesting boxes when our baby chicks become old enough to start laying eggs. But there is my little haul. I am going to go ahead and open up the Flamingo paint kit and give that to Aubrey so she can work on that while I work on my crafts. So overall, I really like this craft idea. I love the quality of the board. It's like a framed piece. It's nice and firm. It's not too flimsy like the canvas because it has a hard back. It comes with all the colors that you need, paint brushes. It comes with like a little key in case you get mixed up. The one downside was that the numbers were so small and so difficult to see and you really had to get up like really up close and personal to see what color was supposed to go where. But that is the nice thing about having that additional paper that shows you what colors go where, you know, in case it's hard to read on the canvas. Now, in a long period of time, Aubrey wanted to start with the white color, which is funny. It looks like she's doing nothing, but it took a while and we didn't make much progress. I mean, I say we because she had me step in and help, but I'm excited to see how it turns out in the future. But now we're going to go ahead and work on the craft. As many of you guys probably know, I've been trying to make like DIY pendant light decorations that just slide right on top of my pendant lights for each season. Now, I had an idea of what I wanted to do for for Easter and I wanted to do like three crosses for sure but I also wanted to do something like the Easter Bunny and eggs and all of that and I thought that if I did three crosses on both pendant lights it would look weird because then there's six crosses total but I also think it kind of looks weird when they're two different things so I'm not quite sure how I feel about having two different ones but I think they both ended up being cute in their own right. But we are going to start off by cutting out this little sliver from my white styrofoam and then a similar little sliver from the green styrofoam that I picked up from the Dollar Tree as well. And this is going to create a little mound that we're eventually going to glue on the moss to. And this will make it look like a little grassy hill, I guess. Now, a long time ago, I stocked up on like way too many Dollar Tree supplies. So I had some of this like wired twine and this was from the Dollar Tree. I'm pretty sure they still have it every once in a while in the crafting section. And I just found a stick or found some sticks outside, trimmed them down, and we're making a little cross by just tying these together with the wired twine. Now, if you don't have wired twine, you could use regular twine and hot glue it together. But the wire at least keeps everything in its place. And while from the side it looks a little weird, from the front and back I think the cross looks great. And I made one larger cross and then two smaller crosses for the men on either side of Jesus. Um, I thought that that would be an important little thing to add to my little grassy hill. So then I'm gonna hot glue the green styrofoam mound to the standard white base that I use for all of my pendant light decorations. And I'm going to be kind of carving out three holes for where I think the crosses will fit. And I'm going to attach the crosses first before adding in the moss. And as you guys will see, the for the smaller crosses, I put a little hole in the styrofoam but when I put the crosses in those holes I thought they were a little too close to the larger cross so I ended up just gluing them to the side of the styrofoam and I think it looks great I don't think that you know having the holes there and then not using them was a big deal so I think it's worth mentioning that in my previous crafts I've only ever used the white styrofoam base which is hidden by the framing of my pendant light so having a little sliver cut out from the white foam wasn't really a big deal. However, when I attached this green styrofoam on top, it would be exposed or that portion of it is exposed from, you know, everyday viewing, I guess. So this sliver that I cut out so that this decoration can fit around the pole of the pendant light, it's visible. So you guys will see that I actually take the portion that I cut and I decorate the outside and then I kind of slide it into that hole 
so that when you're actually looking at the final decoration, there's not this big chunk just like missing from it. And it gives it a more cohesive look. I did have to kind of trim it down a little bit so that it would more easily fit. And I did this off camera. So I did shave off just a little bit of the side so that it would easily slide into the empty space rather than me trying to shove styrofoam back into styrofoam. So this one is very simple, but I really feel like it adds to like the, the meaning of Easter. So we're gonna move on to the second pendant light decoration. I just had this old craft that was falling apart and I figured I would use the items from that craft to make this second decoration. So I'm gluing on some like carrots from the Dollar Tree, some little spotted eggs from the Dollar Tree, and just kind of gluing that around the base. And then on top, we're gonna to be adding the bunnies that you saw me get from Dollar Tree today. Now looking back, I really should have looked at the spacing of everything. I would have liked to have had more spacing between the original carrot and the eggs right beside it because it wasn't quite symmetric at the end on the other side. So if I were to do this again, I would have spent a little bit more time measuring things out so that it was perfectly symmetrical. But in the end, I know that it's not a big deal and it will look fine anyways. And then we're just going to be filling in the empty space with some extra moss so that it just, you know, doesn't look like a bunch of styrofoam on top of my pendant light as well. And then to solve the same problem as I did with the first pendant light decoration, we're going to be using my remaining carrot to fill in that little empty space in between the moss openings. Let me know down below in the comments which of these pendant light decorations is your favorite. Do you like the crosses? If you were to make another one, maybe like an empty tomb, somehow I could try to come up with that type of decoration. Or if you like kind of more of the, the bunny and eggs and maybe put a nest up there, that type of decoration. And then I'm gonna just wrap up this video with a very simple craft idea. You could take those bunnies and just glue them onto a little Jenga block. And then you have this little like freestanding bunny that you could just place throughout your house and add just a touch of Easter where it's missing it. Anyways, I'd like to thank you guys for watching today's video. I hope it gave you some crafting and Easter inspiration. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you are new. I would love to have you stick around and I'll catch you in the next one. to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday, you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.